Hello everyone, Dom here. In this video, I'm going to show you five ways to get big, punchy, thick kick drums. Let's dive into it. So let's start with tip number one. In this case, I'm going to use an acoustic kick drum in the context of a full drum kit. So let's have a listen. So this kick drum sounds fine, but it lacks a bit of oomph, a little bit of low end, and we can enhance it so that it thumps a bit more in the mix. So what I'm going to use in this case is a variation of the Poltec EQ trick. Now, if you don't know what a Poltec is, it's a legendary vintage analog EQ that is really famous for its shelving bands. It does something really, really special and we're going to try and emulate this, but I'm going to use a very specific technique in order to make this kick drum sound bigger, okay? Right now, it's a little bit papery, So let's try and enhance this. In order to do this, you want to go and add a scent effect. As you can see, I've created a scent effect and it's right here, Poltec Kick. And the one thing that I want to make sure is that this scent effect is set to zero and I want to make sure that it's pre-fader. Why? Because we're going to have a compressor in this EQ. I want to make sure that the compressor is going to be triggered exactly the same way no matter where I set my fader level on my kick drum. So this way I'm making sure that the compressor is going to be fed a consistent level no matter if I do any automation here or not. Now let's go and check out our effects channel. There we go. So let me show you what I've done here. I'm going to turn everything on one by one. First, I have the studio EQ and this EQ is just a filter. I'm cutting everything above 136 Hertz. So let's listen to the effects channel in isolation. In Cubase, if you have control room activated, it's very easy to do that by just hitting the L button for listen. Okay, let's have a listen. So this way I'm keeping just the low end information and I'm filtering out everything else. Now the next thing I'm doing is I'm adding a vintage compressor. And with this one I'm compressing this channel to death. Okay, let's have a listen. So what I'm doing here is I'm adding quite a bit of input to drive the compressor. I have the punch activated so that I get a really punchy sound and I have a 20 to 1 ratio, so really, really high compression ratio and a medium release. Now, one of the tricks that I want to show you is that when you compress so much, you get all this nice attack and punch but you might also get a little bit of the tail of the kick drum, a little bit of rumble, maybe some bleed from the other elements. And a very clever way to treat this is to go to your channel strip and use the envelope shaper and turn down the release. This way you will get a way more focused sound that's cleaner as well. So let's have a listen. Hear that? So now we have a very clean sound that just has the low end attack, okay? And then here comes the magic. Now we're going to use our Studio EQ to emulate the Poltec sound. And what I have here, I have a Studio EQ with a shelf three band. So this is a low shelf filter that emulates the Poltec EQ curve, you know, as close as possible. So I have this big bump here and I have a cut right here. And this I can adjust with my cue, as you can see. So this gives me a poltec sound. And in this case, don't be afraid. You can exaggerate, you can add tons of low end because this is how we're going to use this channel. We're going to use this for our low end thump. The only thing you need to be careful about is to make sure that you don't clip the output of the EQ, okay? This is the only thing that I would suggest that you keep it clean.
So now we have our chain completed and now I can start introducing this Poltec kick channel to my mix. Let's have a listen. So this is the first trick that I wanted to show you and this trick is extremely useful because what it does is it gives you the only thing that you need. You need low end punch, you need a very clean low end and this way you also avoid a very common problem that comes when you just add all this low end with just regular EQ which basically just makes the low end a little bit muddy, it's less focused and you have to boost a lot, but when you start boosting a lot then you also affect the tonal balance of the kick drum. In this case, because this is all parallel, I'm leaving the kick drum alone, the original channel, but I can just blend in just a little bit of punch, okay? This works great with kick drums that are weak, that are papery, even if you have a very thin kick drum, when you apply this trick, you're going to get a much bigger, a much fuller sound. So this is a variation of the Poltec trick, and especially with multi-track drums that you cannot add plugins that are going to change the face, this is the right tool for the job. Tip number two is using dynamic EQ. This works on solo kick drums, but it works incredibly well and might be the only way to salvage a stereo drum loop where you don't have all the different elements of the drum kit in separate channels. For example, I have this loop here, let me show you. So in this case, if I start adding a lot of low end, to enhance my kick drum, I'm also going to bring up all the rest of the low end that is there when the kick drum doesn't play. And this will result in a muddy sound, it will make the low end a bit confusing, and it will make the low end less focused. Instead, if you use a dynamic EQ, like what I've done here, you can just enhance the low end only when the kick drum hits. And this is achieved, of course, by using a band where you activate the dynamic section in frequency 2 that I'm using right here. So if I turn it off, it's going to sound like this. Let's have a listen. And now let's turn on dynamic mode. It's a subtle difference, but it will make a huge impact in your mix. Because if I don't use the dynamic EQ in this case, you will hear there's a lot of ringing. When the kick drum hits, there's like a little bit of a resonance and a little bit of a tail in the low end that kind of lasts until the snare and the next kick drum. Have a listen. It's very, very confusing, but when we add the dynamic EQ, that means that the dynamic EQ will pick up when the kick drum hits by just setting the threshold here. Let's have a listen. And it will only boost when the kick drum hits. This is extremely useful, and this might be the only way to enhance a loop like this, that's basically a stereo loop and you don't have control over the individual elements. In this case, it's very important to listen to the music and determine what kind of attack and release times you're going to use for your dynamic EQ. In this case, I have a very fast drum loop, so I'm going to have a very fast attack so that the kick drums are picked up straight away and the dynamic EQ immediately boosts and the release is also very fast because I want to make sure that the boost will go down fast enough so that we don't have a confusing sound and this low end doesn't last for much longer than we need to. So let's have a listen. 
So I can see exactly what's going on right here. So I can see that this only gets boosted when we have a kick drum present. It boosts really fast and then it goes down really fast as well, which is exactly what we want. And in this case, I can be generous with my gain. Of course, listen, see how it sounds and then adjust accordingly. Tip number three is using the multiband envelope shaper. This is one of the miracle plugins that we have in Cubase, in my opinion, and it's just the right plugin to use for thin kick drums. Let me play this track for you. So this is a nice drum machine like kick drum, I really like that, but I would totally enhance this in the low end department in order to get a punchier sound. And the multiband envelope shaper is just the tool for the job. So I'm going to use the multiband envelope shaper. Compared to a regular transient designer, the multiband envelope shaper splits the signal into four bands and then you can shape the transients and the release of each band separately, which is great for kick drums. Because what I can do now is I can go to my kick drum here and say, I want to enhance the attack of the low end. So let's go ahead and do this. I can even change the release. So I can make the kick drum tighter or longer. Now let's enhance the knock. And let's try and boost the low end as well. So. Now it's much thicker, it's fatter, there's a lot of punch in the low end. Let's listen to it with the rest of the drum kit. And if I want to add a little bit of snap, you know, I can even enhance the attack of the high mids or the top end. This is a really, really powerful plugin and you can use it for kick drums, for snares, for toms, for pretty much everything. But on kick drums, it's really, really special. I'm going to stick with the same kick drum now and I'm going to show you the next tip. Tip number four is duplicating your kick drum with a synth. And this is extremely easy to use in Cubase. I'm going to show you all the steps right now. Let me show you how you do this. Let's say that this is our kick drum. And let's say I want to duplicate it with a synth. In order to do this, I'm going to use the Swiss army of synths in Cubase, a Retrolog 2, and I'm going to show you exactly what kind of sound I'm going to create in order to duplicate this kick drum. But first we will have to create the notes for this kick drum. And this is super easy to use, like I said. We just double click on our kick drum event and we go to hit points. And as you can see, Cubase does a very, very good job of detecting all the kick drum hits. But in case you need to adjust this, you just go here and adjust the threshold like that. But in this case, it's very well defined. So now I'm going to go ahead and create MIDI notes. And in this case, I can select a velocity mode. It can be a fixed velocity or depending on how loud every kick drum hit is, it will give us a different MIDI velocity. In this case, I'm going to go for fixed velocity because I want the low end to be consistent. So I'm going to keep the pitch at C1 and I'm going to send this MIDI to the first selected track, which is my Retrolog. So there we go. Now we have our notes right there and we're ready to go. The next thing that we need to do is, of course, create a suitable sound in Retrolog. And let me show you what sound I've created for this.
So this is it. It's a very, very simple sound. It consists of one oscillator in sine wave mode. I have 300 milliseconds of decay time, just a tiny bit of release. And then I set my filter envelope, this one here, to control my pitch. So in this case, as you can see, filter envelope controls my oscillator one pitch. And now I can start tuning it a little bit. And now let's play it with the original kick drum and bring it in gradually. And because we've added these subs with a synthesizer, we have total control over the pitch. We can change the attack, we can change the release. It's very easy to shape the sound. Let me try and change the pitch first. A distortion. So as you can see, I have lots of flexibility and I can build the foundation of my kick drum with total control. That's really, really important. And this will work pretty much on every kick drum. So depending on the kick drum that you have, you can shape the sound and make sure that it blends well with it. And now let's move on to tip number five. Tip number five is a high pass resonant filter. Yes, you heard right, high pass. That means it's going to cut low end. But let me show you because this is a very, very popular trick and a very well kept secret when it comes to creating really big kick drums, even if your kick drum is not so powerful to begin with. So what I'm gonna use in this case, I'm going to use my Studio EQ and I'm going to use band number one in cut mode. So this means that it's a low cut filter. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn the Q all the way up so I can create a resonance right here pretty much like what a synth would do when you raise the resonance control on your filter. And then I'm going to play with the frequency until I find the point where my kick drum sounds big. Check it out. And the great thing with the Studio EQ is that it has an auto gain function, which means that even though we add all this low end, our levels are going to be just right, okay? So let's have a listen again. So as you can see, when I remove it, everything falls apart. The kick drum sounds really thin, really papery, and in the context of a mix, it would totally get lost. It wouldn't give us the thump that we need. So this trick is just right for the job, especially for some genres of music where you need these big resonant kick drums. This is just the right recipe. So there you go. These are five tips to make your kick drum sound big, fat, and punchy. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.